Hey friends, my name is Rick from BI Gorilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you some ways in Power Query to use the in operator. It doesn't have an in operator by itself, but we can use some other tricks to replicate it. As you all know, I'm a big fan of Power Query, but it does miss out on some very basic functions that you know in other languages. One of them is the in operator. And this in operator allows you to check whether a value is equal to one out of a selection. Now, why would you want to do that? How does it make your life easier? If you look at my screen, I here have the sales for products and colors, different products in different colors. And I have the sales right there. And let's imagine that you want to have a look on whether a product is on sale. Yes or no. So let's say our jeans skirts and socks are on sale then you can do something like this so you can go to add custom column if product equals jeans or product equals well let's say skirts or product equals socks this is the condition you'll have to write. Then we could say we have a category called sale and else we have a category called um, regular. And we call this one category. Say OK. There you go. Now, as you have noticed, our if function here has a lot of repetition. So the, the column called product comes back multiple times. And then we have a result right there. Okay, so we now just have three items that we have in there. But imagine that you might have 10 or 20 or even 30. Then this is not very convenient. And the in operator allows you to bundle things. So in SQL, for example, you could say if a product is in, and then you just supply the whole list of possible solutions. Now, Power Query doesn't have this, but I'm going to show you different ways in which you can replicate this. So let's say that we want to replicate this jeans, skirts, and socks. Now, if you want to operate on a single column, we could do this. I'm just going to copy this for a second. We're going to create a custom column, a new column right there, copy paste. And instead of writing all of this, you can make use of a, fun a function called list contains. And the list contains function looks like this. And as a first argument, it wants to have a list of items. And then as a second argument, it's going to check if that item in the second argument is within the list. So what we of course can do then is say, okay, we're looking for a list of items. We open our curly bracket. We're looking for jeans, comma. We're looking for skirts. We're looking for socks. And if it's one of these items, well, we close our list now, then I want to check if it's in our product column. So the product here is the product column down there. And this is the list of items you want to check against. So if this list contains our product like skirts, then if it's in there, return seal, otherwise return regular. Good enough. Now we get exactly the same result as the previous page. It's just a little bit easier. And this allows you to easily expand it later as well without making, without bloating your code. Let's say it like that. Another big benefit of this is instead of putting this right there, we can also reference other items. So let's, for example, say we have these items, jeans, skirts, and socks. We could also have a separate table that has like products and we have jeans, socks, and skirts without a capital. So these are products to check. So this creates our separate table here. And if I drill down here, then this already is a list called products to check. Now, because we have this list contains function, I can now easily say, I want to replace this part and just reference the products to check right there. And if I click OK, the result will still be the same. So a benefit of list contains here is that you can reference another list. If this wasn't a list at all, 
but we'll still call them like products. We could do the same, but your um, the syntax would just be slightly different. So instead of products to check only, which is a table, we would also have to reference the column name, which was products, I believe. So referencing a table in their column returns the values in that column, but then in the form of a list. And this makes it easy as well for us to paste it in here. So that's good to know. Okay. So far, you already know what to do with a single column. So with this single column, you can already replicate the in operator. But let's say you want to do your checks for multiple columns. Let's call this one product again. There we go. Let's say we want to do this for multiple columns. So I start with a clean slate and now I want to check for two different columns. I want to check whether products has a value called skirts and the color is uh, brown and we want to look for yellow jeans. Now for that, we need to look for multiple columns, but we can also replicate some sort of inf if function here. Let's have a look. So before we check things, our first step is to make sure that we have these combinations in a table. So I'm going to start a fresh table here and you can start that with hashtag table. And we're going to first of all, create a, the table column names. So you can open a curly bracket called product. We have a comma and we also have a color. And this already creates a table with their two column names. The second argument in the table uh, uh, initiator right there, the second argument there allows you to input values for those columns. And the easiest way to do that is to open a curly bracket, then open another curly bracket. Let me make some spaces. And in this, uh, in, within the second curly bracket is a list within a list. We can create the combinations we're looking for. So we might be looking for genes, which are blue. So the first two values are these. And then you can write a comma. And we're also going to be looking for skirts, but then brown. So we now have a table with two columns. And within those columns, you find these combinations. This is the table you have. Okay. Uh, our products, products and color. I'll call it like this, product and color. Okay. Now, our next step is to filter our table for this. So I can make another check here and say change type. And now I can filter this table to filter these both values from our previous item here. And a trick to do that is I can create a separate column and I'm going to check something with if table contains this one here. And now what we want to do is we want to check if the table that we just generated, if within that table, Somewhere we find the combination of values we're looking for. So I'm going to look in the product and color table, which was the previous step. And then I'm going to look for the values of our current column called product. And we write a comma and the next column called color. Close. Well, if it contains it, then we say sill else regular and we call the column category. Okay. So this now looks for the combination of skirt brown jeans blue, skirt brown jeans blue. So that's all going well. And we did that by using this expression right there. Now I did it separately because it just is a bit more visual to understand what's happening. But if you like, we can simply copy paste this, go to the last tab. And then our table contains formula. We just write uh, shift enter and instead of this part we can just paste that all the way in there and then this check is on the next part so we have a table contains function that first of all has a table with the values we want to find and then in each of the combination of values in the table it's going to check if any of those the records match and then if you click ok it's all all right so those are two ways in which you can replicate the in operator. And on my blog, you will find two other ways 
on how you can do this with multiple columns as well. So if you want to learn more on this, I do recommend checking it out. And I also have some ideas on how you can do this for the coalesce operator, but you'll find that in a separate video. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one and uh, see you next time.